Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to create an SFTP server with a locked down user so that essentially that user only has access to a very small subset of directories that they can only access. So this works well when you have to create an SFTP server and you have multiple different users using and you need to keep their data separated and they should never be able to see anyone else's data or any um, else any other thing on the server. So um, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content or want to me or send me some free swag, let me know. My email's in the description below. So let's get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing that we will do is um, log into our SSH server. Uh, 147. So if you already have SSH installed, like OpenSSH, um, which OpenSSH server, um, which pretty much allows you to SSH in, you're already halfway there. So I already have it installed because I can SSH to my server. Um, from here, what we'll do is create a few things. So we will first create the test user. Um, add a test user. Um, which is essentially the user that we will use to log, be able to log in. You can create as many users as you want, which can create one test user. Um, we will also set the password for that test user. Now you can make it so that everyone that needs to be logged in requires an SSH key as, as opposed to a password. Um, either or will work. SSH keys are more secure than <laughs> obviously a password that anyone can get. Um, but in this case, for this demo purposes, we'll just use a password. Um, and then we will also add a group, so group add, and call it SFTP users. So this is very important because we will need this group and we will use this in our configuration. Um, and I need to spell group right. <laughs> group add SFTP users. Um, so from there, since we now have created the user, we've created the group, we will now need to, you do user mod to modify the user um, and add it. Um, so essentially add group to um, SFTP users for the test user. So now if we were to ID test user, we can see that um, test user is now part of the SFTP users group, which is what we want. And then we will create uh, a few directories. Um, so we'll create a directory called SFTP test user for their home directory and we'll have files in that directory. The reason why we're doing it like this is because we're going to end up using um, ch root directory, which will essentially drop a user in a specific directory. And that is like their base directory. They can't go anywhere past that. Um, so usually we would do this on slash SFTP. But the problem with that is that means that test user can still see directories like the other user other user directories, not necessarily, they can't really do anything with it, but they can still see it. And we want to make it so that that isn't the case. So we're going to actually lock it down to the SF slash, FT slash SFTP and then slash their home directory. And then anything else they should, that, that user should be able to upload things in the files directory. So we're going to structure it like that, but you can obviously structure it differently in your case, depending on what your use case scenario is. Um, now, what we'll need to do is actually change the ownership test user um, for the use owner and group for SFTP test user uh, files. And then we'll also need to lock it down to do chmod 700 um, slash SFTP test user files. So if we were to look at files permissions though, so in slash SFTP, the file permissions for the test user is still owned by root and root. So, but in here, the files directory is owned by test user. Um, so essentially the test user can do everything in files, but it wouldn't be able to do anything in SFTP test user. Um, so this is how we will essentially lock it down. So now that we got everything pretty much on the user side configured, what we'll need to do is now edit the configuration side for SSHD config. So, um, when you install OpenSSH, essentially, uh, this is the SSHD config that comes with pretty much it. And at the very bottom, what we're going to do is actually do the subsystem override. Um, but we're going to do it a little bit differently than what they currently just have it. So in here, we'll just comment out what they have in current subsystem and we'll just 
and what we need at the very bottom. So we'll still use subsystem um, for SFTP and we'll just call it internal SFTP. Um, from here, we will match any group that is the group essentially SFTP uses. So this is a group that we created. Um, if you named it differently, you would just put a different group. So anything that is in the SFTP user group, we will set the ch root directory to be SFTP and then the user directory of that. And then we'll force the command, force command, um, internal SFTP, um, D for the directory and files. So essentially whenever they log in, they will go to slash SFTP, the, their username, and then files. Um, now, the force command is just another kind of parameter that you can use, and internal SFTP means that this user can only SFTP and can't SSH or do anything else, right? Um, so, what we'll do here is save that systemctl, restart, and restart SSHD config. So, um, we'll quickly add DNS to here um, so that we can just resolve it via DNS instead of um, IP. Um, so we'll update the serial number and SFTP in root 8 and 172.168.147. Save that. Uh, add SFTP. All right, so that's going to go in there. Um, and so what we'll do is open another terminal um, and we will go to. Um, what was our last last thing that we created? Uh, Firefly. Let me just go to that. So SSH Firefly. <laughs> dot dragon dot local. And so what we'll do here, um, we'll have this in the corner and change to um, SFTB test user change to files. Okay, so now I've logged into my Firefly server. It doesn't really make a difference, but I'm just going to show you from one server to another or from your computer, I could do FileZilla too. It would work the same way. Um, but we'll just do it kind of via the terminal here where um, now we can SFTP test user at sftp.dragon.local. It will ask me for the password here. So we'll type in the password. And we can now see that we have the SFTP prompt right here. Um, so if we were to print walking directory, you can see that we did get thrown into slash files. So if you were to do like change directory to slash, you can see that. But essentially, we only see files. So we've locked it down so that it can't get anywhere past the user directory. It won't go past here. So you can create more users and it won't even be able to know. This user only knows this, everything after test user. It only knows anything in that directory, which is what we want for, you know, multi-tenant use essentially. So what you can do here is, um, so you, you can't do anything in here in regards to um, the test user directory. So slash in this case. So like if I were to like um, put docker compose .yaml, this will error because it's permission denied. You actually have to put it in the files directory, docker compose, compose .yaml. And you can see now that I've actually uploaded it, if I were to go to my SFTP server, we can see that the docker compose file is there. Um, you can also create multiple other files within the test user directory that they can use, or you can create it underneath the test user directory uh, or under the files directory and say, you know, test directory. And we can see now that there's also a test directory in here. So essentially now you've locked, you create an SFTP server, you've locked down user access to um, just their specific directory. And now people, uh, users can upload and download files from the SFTP server from only their user. And there you go. So if you enjoyed the video guys, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.